What's going on, sports card hobby family? Another day, another sports card video. I'm preparing to leave today to head down to Atlanta for the Culture Collision Show. First time I've set up, and I thought I'd talk in today's video about just kind of the the process and actually the tougher process, I didn't realize how tough it would be, actually choosing inventory, figuring out what am I taking? How am I pricing? How am I gonna do this? And I think that it plays into a lot of what I think a lot of people have been doing over the last probably 12 to 18 months. Definitely for me in 2023, all of last year, a lot of consolidation, really asking myself and how I picked inventory to take to Atlanta is, can I get this card back? How badly do I want this to be able to view it, be able to hold on to it? Or, you know, can I get this card back? I've been picking up a lot of cards have been coming out of the woodwork lately. If you watch my channel, this is kind of a niche set that I collect. It's a 2013 Fleer Retro Marvel set. And in this set, they're very difficult to find. There's so much emphasis around the PMGs, but there are auto cards that are in these, but they're not, there, there are regular autos, but then there's the Impel insert autographs which are 1990, 1991, 1992 inspired, and they're done by an artist. They're signed by that artist. It might be Mark Bagley. Uh, and there's a variety of different artists. Well, there's a Wolverine card that recently popped up. There's one on eBay that's a BGS 9.5. I'll put a picture up here. Um, and it's, sell it's, it's like $15,000 OBO. You know, it's, I think it's like a BGS 9.5. Well, a raw copy of this card, and this is the 1992 Impel insert, this one is more rare than the 90, the 91, the 92. I think it's like one out of a thousand packs or so to get one of these one of these autos, and there's 15 cards in the checklist. So to get Wolverine or Spider-Man, those are really the big chase out of this insert auto set. So it's a very niche thing that I collect. I've got a bunch of these. But the Wolverine, I kind of figured, look, I'm never going to get this card because it's not going to, first off, I'm not going to find it. It's not a numbered card, but I, I think that there's probably about 20 or 25 in existence. I've kind of followed some of the Marvel card forums and different things, and they've talked about these cards, these 2013 Fleer Retro Impel 92 autos. I don't think there's more than 20 or 25 copies in existence. You, you just don't see them. I've been looking for it for literally a year and a half for one to pop up in a price range that, that made sense. And I've only seen the one at 15,000 OBO. And then you've got this one that popped up and it was at first, I think it was like $800 or best offer. And slowly we kind of worked down and I ended up getting the card for about 525, I think is what I bought it for. And a lot of you might say like, man, that's a lot of money to spend on a Marvel card. But for me, this is, again, it's one of those cards you just don't find. It's arguably the most popular character in the MCU other than Spider-Man. It's really Wolverine and Spider-Man lead the way. And it's the chase. You know, it's a chase for a card that, again, you just don't see. And so for these pickups that I've had, I also picked up an Alvin Kamara Gold Prism uh, BGS 9.5. I wasn't really as worried about the, the BGS grade or any of that. I just wanted to get a copy. They're numbered out of 10. You know, there's only so many of those. And of course, because they are limited, people can ask whatever they want from a pricing standpoint. So really, that's what I've been doing. I'm taking a lot of graded Stranger Things cards to Atlanta, probably about 80% of my inventory. And then I'm going to have some other non-sports. And then also I'm going to have sports cards as well. Flip and Steve's going to be with me. He's going to have a nice mix. We're going to have a sweet table out at Culture Collision because of the variety, the sheer variety that we're going to have there is going to be pretty cool. But again, when I was looking at the Stranger Things cards, I'm probably bringing 80 or 90 Stranger Things slabs, but I'm leaving home another 40 or 50 that I look at. It's just like, man, it took me a year to find that one, or this just popped up. You know, these just don't pop up. So it's not easy to replace. I purposely bought multiples of quite a few cards because A, they don't pop up that much. And then B, just so I have options. So I have resale options. I was getting them at good prices from what I consider to be good prices and then grading a lot of them out. So it'll be interesting to see this. This is going to be a fun experiment for me because I have no idea if this inventory is going to be interesting to anyone. I know some people certainly are interested in Stranger Things cards and the actor autos and those sorts of things, but I haven't set up at a show in 30 years. It could be a total bomb. Again, we will have sports cards and other things as well, but I think it's going to be fun just the experience as a whole, just to kind of see how it all works. And if there's any interest in the same thing that, that I do collect because I would say the collector base for Stranger Things cards fairly small compared to what you would see in other you know you hear about Marvel cards you hear about Star Wars and then of course sports cards massive collector base so this is going to be fun but again I think it goes back to whether you're setting up to be a dealer or if you are just kind of curating a collection a lot of people talk about I'm curating my collection a certain way but 
I really do think it takes years to kind of figure out what are the things that you really want to hold on to? What are the things that really, really matter to you? Because you end up just, as you're looking for things, as you're looking, you buy things along the way and then realize, you know what? I do like that thing, but th this is a thing that I really want. And then you end up selling off to get into that thing. It might be a bigger thing or it might just be lateral stuff that's just more important to you. I made clear I've been looking for the Art to Bart 93 Skybox autograph card. They are out there. They're on eBay right now and they're $10,000 or best offer, $15,000 or best offer. They're very limited cards. They were redemptions. They're numbered to 400. It's original art signed by Matt Groening. They're numbered to 400, but a lot of the redemption cards didn't get redeemed. So there's just not that many out there in, in the grand scheme of things. You think, oh, it's numbered out of 400, but there's not 400 of them in existence. It's from 1993 as the Simpsons were starting to you know, gather steam. I did pick up, I shared this on Instagram, but I picked up this a Life in Hell sketch that Matt Groening did. And this was the inspiration for Itchy and Scratchy in the Simpsons universe. But this was also the sketch that got Fox executives' attention that led into The Simpsons. It is signed by him going back to 1990, which of course 1990 is really when Simpsons started to get going. So I think that it's cool to sign back then, right as they were kind of getting started. And then of course he did a little, he did, a, I don't know if you can see it, but on the side he did a, a sketch. He also did kind of a little, you know, our piece of artwork there on the side. So just a very unique piece. So I think when we talk about curating the collection, what does that mean? And it can go a lot of different ways. To my vintage friends, my vintage car friends out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about with this. I've got the Bart Star Rookie going back to 1957 tops. It's in an SGC4 case. And as we've said, you know, this stuff is not mega rare, but the fun of finding your copy, that is the key to this. So depending on what price point you're in, you know, you might be in a price point for a two or you might be looking for an eight, but however it's going to go, you're trying to find the one that best suits what you are looking for. And for, for me, for vintage, it's centering and surface are the things I prioritize over corners and edges. For me, you know, sharp corners just means that the thing might have been trimmed. I don't want there to ever be a thing where, oh, down the line, oh, we found this database of all the cards that were trimmed. And oh, sorry, yours is lumped in. So for me, I'm paranoid. I don't mind soft, fuzzy corners. I really want to see nice registration surface and then as good a centering as I can get for the price point in the grade. And this four looked a lot better than fives and sixes that I saw at much higher prices. I've heard other vintage folks say, hey, I've really reprioritized my collection to where I moved out of off-centered cards, and now I'm just, I want centered cards and I don't really care about anything else. You've, you've heard that a lot across the vintage universe. Centering. Centering is going to be a thing that separates vintage cards from other vintage cards. And I, and I can understand because, like, like we're saying, there's not a huge shortage. You know, these aren't one of ones, you know, these rookie cards, but the condition is so, so important. And so it's really just about your journey, whether it's a vintage baseball card or football card, basketball, whatever it is. You might say, I want a Julius Serving rookie card. Which one do you want? What's the priority there for you? Because a lot of people, they're not necessarily stacking a dozen, you know, Dr. J rookies. They might want one or two really nice copies that they can put in their collection along with the other Hall of Famers that they're collecting. So I think this is kind of fun when you really talk about getting serious about curating a collection. And then the other thing too is taste change over time. So you might have a very curated collection today and in five to 10 years, you might have different interests. You know, maybe my whole collection in 10 years will be vintage cards. I don't know. Taste can change over time. That's kind of a natural fun part of collecting slash speculating slash all the rest of it. So I thought it'd be a cool topic to talk about today. Guys, I hope that you have an amazing weekend ahead. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.